Welcome along guys. Well, I am on the fantastic KTM 1290 Super Adventure S. I'm actually riding back to KTM HQ now to return this bike after my two week loan. I've done no videos, no nothing. I've just used this. This has been my workhorse really for the last two weeks. And I thought I can't return this bike without recording some sort of video on it. It's that good. So here we are. This is my full roundup of the KTM 1290 Super Adventure S. So first of all, let's just talk about the fit on this bike. This bike is a humongous bike. Even this S version in its road trim with the 19 inch front wheel, you know, the road based suspension travel is still a massive thing. And even me at six foot two, to swing your leg over it, it takes a hefty throw of the leg. It's a big bike, maneuvering it, it's massive. You know, you've got to be careful pushing this thing around. It's not massively heavy on paper. I think it's about 220-ish kilos dry. So, you know, it's a big bike, but for a big 1300cc adventure, it's not too bad. Compared to the GS, it's a relative lightweight. The standout feature, though, of this bike is that engine. It is phenomenal. This engine is, of course, from the Super Duke R. This is a slightly detuned version of that motor. So this produces 160 brake horsepower and 140 newton meters of torque. So it's got the same torque level as the Super Duke, the same torque level as the GT, but it's, it's 15 horsepower down on the top end. And a slightly, you know, the way that torque is delivered is slightly spread out on this, slightly earlier down the rev range and it is absolutely ridiculously fast. It's so bizarre to have that sort of power in an adventure bike. Now you can crack the throttle and it will try and wheelie in third gear. If this didn't have electronics, I think it's one of those bikes which would be almost unrideable. It would certainly eventually catch you out on a wet, on a wet Monday morning. Bonkers! You've got that wonderful six and a half inch TFT that's across the, the GT. All the 1290 engines have that screen now. It, was, it first appeared on this bike. This was the original bike to get that screen. This makes it really easy to get through the menus. I mean, there's not many buttons on this because everything is really all within the menus of the screen. So it keeps a fairly, a fairly simple layout of the switch gear, which I like. It's exactly the same screen and it has exactly the same features as the Super Duke GT. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but it's got the right, you know, the KTM My Ride, all the phone integration, all of that good stuff. So if you want to know more about the display, have a look at my GT video. I, I cover a bit more in detail in that. But suffice to say, it is a fantastic display. Cornering ABS. You know, all of that good stuff, cornering traction control. These latest KTM electronics, oh, yeah, incredible. Absolutely incredible. Enables you to just push that a little bit harder, really, knowing they're in the background. Whether that's a good thing or not, <laughs> it's another matter, isn't it? But that is what they do. This bike's a comfortable bike. It's, it's, it's more comfortable than the GT, the Super Duke GT. The seat seems softer. The seat is a little bit wider. It's a bit more sculpted for you to fit in. And of course, you've got this massive 23 litre tank and this massive amount of weather protection from this. Also has the hand guards like the GT. Well, the difference on this bike is the screen comes up much higher. The GT screen finishes about here. The thing I love about these adventure bikes when it comes to just munching miles is when your ass does start to get a little bit sore you can do this you can just stand up perfectly straight take the weight off your ass and just rest your bum and just stand up for a little while you can't do that on the super Duke gt it's too low you haven't got that distance between the pegs the bars aren't high enough for you to be able to stand up 
and that is why I do like an adventure bike for covering distance even if I'm not going to go off road just to be able to stand up and, and take some weight off your ass for as long as you want you can ride stood up like that as long as you want yes you'll get some funny looks from the cars as you're passing them <laughs> on the back wheel you know below sort of two and a half thousand revs it's a bit lumpy because this will red this will this will rev to like eleven thousand revs on the gs for example those engines are so tractable from idle you know those were like those engines though that that new 1250 engine only revs to 9000 rpm but it's a lot smoother than what this v-twin ktm is it hasn't got the performance that this has got but it is a lot smoother so if you want ultimate smoothness on your commute or on your ride then i think the gs is a better buy but if you want ultimate performance on your commute then the adventure takes it we've got to do well we've got to do well this is chain drive of course whereas the gs is shaft drive so you do have that chain maintenance with this but that does save some weight those shaft drive systems are heavy systems it can get a little bit warm in traffic i mean you are sat right on top of the cylinder head more or less with this v-twin setup but it's not too bad i don't find it overly hot even in the summer even the miles i've done on the days which are 30 plus degrees i wasn't getting too hot what i tend to do if i'm on a long trip i don't sit about waiting for my ass to start hurting i tend to take proactive measures to stop that happening so after you've been on the bike for 40 minutes or so just stand up stand up rest your bottom ah i love that this this is the best thing about riding an adventure bike it's been able to stand up and rest your ass like this i absolutely love it morning now i was actually caught out i've always said keyless ignition this bike is keyless by the way <laughs> it worries me that without a key if it malfunctions how would you get into the fuel cap well i spent 15 minutes at the petrol station the other day trying to open the fuel cap on this bike i was it just wouldn't seem to open i was like well, what have i got to do is it the ignition on is it kill switch on is it ignition off how would you get it to open and I just couldn't get it to bloody open. 15 minutes, I nearly, well, I nearly had to take the bike home and just get, take another bike out because I couldn't put any fuel in the damn thing. I haven't put any fuel in since then. So I think you just have to turn it off, wait a few seconds and then try and open the cap. No, that isn't how you do it. Oh, I hate it. Turn it off. Give it a few seconds. Run home. This is this is why I hate them. This is why I hate keyless ignition. <laughs> oh. There must be something slightly wrong with this bike. Why won't you open? Ah, oh, so there we go. Perfect example of why keyless fuel caps suck <laughs> now we have to munch some miles i'll switch you back on again when we do the walk round at the end of the a34 see you in a bit so there she is there is the mile muncher and there's my coffee let me just have a swig Ooh. it's an imposing looking bike i mean the size of the front end you know it's massive it's again got that ktm distinctive KTM headlight with the running lights and the cornering these are the cornering lights at the bottom the main and high beam at the top there but you know you can't mistake this bike for anything else it's an imposing looking machine and for this year I really like this matte orange and sort of silver look the whole tank is like a matte orange it's a little bit different braking at the front provided by Brembo brakes excellent the 19 inch front wheel so this is the difference with the with the s version it has a 19 inch front wheel whereas the r version has a 21 inch front wheel so this is geared up as a road bike 
sexy little Brembo rear caliper on there. Incredibly powerful rear brakes. I think this sort of bike you do a lot of braking on the rear, just sort of for setting your corner speed, that sort of thing. The seat is very well sculpted onto the tank, and again, there's a lot of comfort with that. They do do a, an optional comfort seat, which I think if you're really going to do like days in the saddle, then I'd like the comfort seat, but that's just a uh, you know, as a commuter for a couple of hours stints, that's absolutely fine, that seat. But anything more, I think, than a couple of hours, it would be nice to get the comfort one. You've, of course, got all of the provisions for attaching panniers, top box. This little sight gauge here is, is the oil level. So it's so easy to check the oil on these. There's no dipsticks. You know, you don't even have to... You can do it from six feet away. There's also some cubby holes here for keeping stuff in. I don't know if you can keep your wallet in there, your phone in there. It's also got a centre stand and a side stand, which is a nice touch. So you've got proper centre stand. But yeah, I have to say about it really, it's just a good, sensible, incredibly comfortable, imposing bit of kit. Plenty of hope for rejoining the, the motorway. Pretty, pretty handy in the twisties. It's no slouch. It's not a faster way to get to work, that's for sure. So I've had this one for two weeks. I've done a lot of miles. And I nearly gave this back without doing a review again because I, I just didn't get time. And I thought, no, the bike deserves to be spoken about. It's such a good bike. I have to do a video. I have to let you guys know about it because a lot of people are asking me, you know, I wanted the GT, but I bought the Super Adventure. You know, which should I buy, the Super Adventure or the GT? The simple answer is, First of all, do you want to do any off-roading? Because there's no way on earth you could go off-roading on the GT. If you don't want to do any off-roading, what do you want to use the bike for? Is it a commuting? Is it for doing distance? Or is it for having fun in the twisties? Like maybe going on a tour, but when you get there, having fun on a twisty tour like Topeco's or something. Well, to answer that one, that is what it's about. What do you want the bike for? If it is as a commuter, for doing serious mileages on you're not too you know you want some fun in the twisties but you're not you're not interested in really getting that extracting every last inch of performance and i think this will do the distances much better than the gt will for the simple fact that you can you've got more it's more spacious it's more roomy the seat's more comfortable you can stand up easily because of the high bars and rest your ass and you've got more wind protection so for those reasons, this is a better mile muncher. But if you really want that ultimate performance, you want more of a Super Duke than a Super Adventure, then the GT is a Super Duke, just with a bit of a screen and a, and a few of the extra creature comforts. It's much more of a performance oriented machine than what this is. So I hope that helps you uh, make up your mind. But thanks for watching, guys. It's nice to come out actually and take you along with me on just a boring commute like this. <laughs> Give me something to do rather than just sit looking at the motorway. But uh, appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around. I'll catch you next time. This is power level one, which is full power. Check it man, this thing is absolutely bonkers.